Hello everyone and welcome to ProRPA.com. This week we'll be talking about uh, email automations, right? So um, I have presented a pretty beneficial use case that you know um, we have discussed about the different operations that we can perform within UiPath to automate them, like um, extraction of data or putting data into um, any application, UI element interactions. Uh, we have discussed about the PDF automations in last two weeks, and uh, we have discussed the Excel specific activities too before. So, um, from the operation standpoint, I think we stand pretty good. But usually, what happens is we need to have some sort of um, email automation also incorporated within our operations because many a times when you perform an operation, you usually send out an email saying that you know the operation was completed successfully, or even in case it is um, it didn't go through as expected. Then you let your, uh, I don't know, subordinates or your managers know that, you know, um, the job was, n needs some some more, I don't know, information or some tweaking from the back end or something like that, right? So um, that's just one particular use case. Emails, you need to have, like, you know, uh, just, just because um, something has been performed, you need to uh, intimate the user that, you know, that the job has been performed, right? So uh, all those things, uh, we need email for that and also many a times um, like when you have to, uh, let's say there's an attachment in an email that you have to import or download and then put it in a system for further operations or something, right? Then um, those capabilities must be incorporated. There's no point um, if you have to do like slightest of the manual work uh, in an, in a, in a full-fledged operation if uh, if it can be up, up, uh, automated then I mean like it pretty much defeats the purpose of having an RPA solution right so let us all just simply take an example where we'll be um, uh, logging into our uh, Gmail account right which is like this and uh, I'll be taking off first 500 emails and I'll be displaying their subjects right and uh, you know once you have the subjects or depends right you can have the you can access the body as well you can access the header information etc etc we'll be taking some of the other examples but uh, they're fairly easy to use and once you have like um, any particular information that you're looking for then you can do some sort of comparisons like if the subject says system automated email or something like that right and um, th then probably that is the email that you want because it's not uh, always going to be the case that you'll get only the emails that you need. You get spam emails also, but uh, for a particular operation, you might need only certain type of emails, right? So those are the things that you can work upon, you know, based on the conditions that you're going to put once you have some information about those emails in handy within your workflow diagrams, right? Make sense? Okay. So um, I have the email and. Um, First and foremost, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you. I'm I'm searching for Gmail IMAP settings. Uh, if you go right here, you can see um, that the actually there's a reason why I'm not uh, maximizing this screen. But uh, for the incoming mail using the IMAP server, you have the port as 993 and uh, the server as imap.gmail.com. Right. I've also discussed this in uh, detail in the blog post, so please do check that out. But uh, I have only, let's say, five emails that I want to um, talk about, right? So I'm actually sort of like, you know, trying to make them. So, um, so first, what the activity that we're going to use is the get IMAP mail messages, right? In here, once you use this uh, activity, you get to. I can also show it to you one. And in here, you have the um, you know the default folder as uh, the mail folder as the inbox because most of the operations that you'll be performing will be within the inbox folder itself, right? But you can always access the sent items or outbox if something is going on, um, some operation or any other draft folder. That's that's totally fine, right? And the port you'll be putting it as nine nine three. And uh, for the server, you put it up as imap.gmail.com, right? The email and the password need to be your uh, Gmail email account. 
which is let's say abc at gmail dot com and the password whatever it is abcd whatever right and in here the options is what provides the functionality to be performed within the mailbox folder that you chose so you can delete the messages you can uh, just choose the only unread messages which is as per the use case that I'm taking upon right now and uh, I want to access top 5 right so I just change this parameter to 5 and um, once these are set you have to create a new item uh, variable and uh, the mail messages item will have uh, uh, you know the type of uh, the, the name of the output uh, variable that you'll be putting up and you'll be retrieving later on so I have put it up as IMAP underscore MSG as my um, output variable, right? I'm not accessing this because my email ID and password would actually be visible, right? So if you put in your password as this, so you'll be able to see, right? I'll have to change and all that stuff. So, but the settings are pretty much the same and uh, the, the one that I just discussed and they're also a part of the blog article in one of the images that I've put in there, right? So once the uh, email um, messages have been retrieved, you create a for each loop, and uh, within the for each loop, you have a mail uh, for each mail, and this mail or whatever the counter variable for each item is going to be the def uh, the default counter variable that everybody uses. Just remember that when you click here, your type of argument, which is like the type of this counter variable, has to be same as uh, the uh, the array of item that you'll be you know uh, retrieving data from right so IMAP message if you go and check out uh, it's gonna be of type uh, mail message right system.net.mail.mail message so the type of argument this is not something this is a this is conceptually actually correct I guess it's gonna make sense intuitively to you guys but uh, uh, usually the counter variable is of the same type as the uh, list which we'll be traversing through right so in this case we explicitly mentioned it that it's going to be of mail message type and uh, the IMAP message is the output variable from the previous activity and in the body I'm just uh, retrieving the mail dot subject which is the subject of all those top 500 emails right a fairly simple example and um, if you you know just uh, go back and just put mail dot you see a lot of other options are there you can put the body you can see the CC uh, like the people who have been CC to the email that can be retrieved or uh, you know if, if from like the person you got this email from write some header information and uh, the priority of that email if it has been set this subject is what we are working on right now you can also get the two information like to whom the message uh, was sent or like these are the usual mail functions that which are provided which are inbuilt to this uh, system.net.mail message uh, you know data type we have used the dot operator before right so a simple workflow is ready for us and uh, let's just simply try and see these are the emails that I'm trying to access and on running this experience with spectra the you know all the five um, welcome this and uh, protect yourself blah 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 whatever right so you see all the first five um, unread emails were accessed their um, subjects were accessed and uh, instead of putting them in a message box I can either put them in a, an Excel or simply just put them in the list itself retrieve them and uh, instead of displaying them I can do some sort of further computations and uh, perform you know subsequent operations so um, that's how the IMAP messages are uh, you know retrieved and um, you know I've discussed the different mail servers that are available the SMTP the protocols and everything in the blog post and uh, those are like the SMTP specifically for uh, the output activities which we'll be discussing um, in the next blog post but um, other than the IMAP messages which is um, you know which required some sort of configuration it is a very simple one the gmail one but it might get a little convoluted as well and uh, in your gmail account you might have to make a few changes in your parameters like you know 
um, you have to enable the IMAP and sometimes uh, in your settings you might have to um, like go and uh, like provide access to your Gmail with uh, with less secure apps you might have to do that to make this work but I mean um, to automate the process and if your login credentials are like you know keep them like sophisticated like use some random numbers and some capitalization and all that stuff then you should be fine you should be okay because you know that makes your account less vulnerable if you're making it accessible to other servers it still is gonna require the login ID and the password right so try to make them more convoluted so that your that, that thing can be compensated to some extent right so this is how the IMAP mail messages uh, work and uh, fairly simple so this is how we use the IMAP messages and um, I also want to give another example that instead of the subject let's say if we have uh, if we want um, the date information uh, like when uh, this e these top five unread emails uh, came right then uh, I simply use the headers date information and uh, if you run this then you can see that the date information is coming up right these are all the first five emails with their date and times and everything so um, right this is uh, again very easy to use um, you can use different functions using the dot operator however for the outlook right if you have if you instead of get using the get imap mail, mail messages activity if you use the get outlook mail messages you see you don't have to use the um, login id and the password and everything because these are usually configured within the system especially when you're working for a firm they have their own outlook messages and uh, their their own dedicated exchange ms exchange server and everything right so in that case all you have to do is simply provide the account detail right whatever your um, um, email ID is and it's automatically gonna take the password so like for my firm that I work for we have uh, uh, even when I access my outlook I don't even have to enter the password at all so pretty much the same parameters from within the system itself are taken care of by the UiPath studio and uh, the configuration becomes much much simpler because you don't have to do any right and another thing another major sophisticated technique option capability that has been provided for the outlook mail messages is the filter option so in this filter option right uh, because this is like the get outlook mail messages right we're not even traversing or we haven't even got the mail messages yet before even getting it at the server level itself we can apply some filters right uh, filters like you know um, that the receiving time let's say of uh, the like if you want to access those emails which are unread maximum amount maximum number of emails you want is five and um, which have uh, like which for, from last two hours you want all those emails right and only up to five that's the maximum amount of emails that it can have then uh, it becomes pretty easy to use this filter which is gonna be simply um, let me put this up something like this so um, like receiving time and uh, in your outlook messages you can simply use the receive time parameter within the formulas that you put in in the filter to get the receive time of an email and then um, if it is greater than um, like uh, the current time which is taken by now function and then we're adding two hours to it right and uh, because we have used a minus two that means it's gonna be subtracted so that means last two hours because that's the function that we're using if we have put in plus two then the date would have been a future one minus two would add a minus two which means it's gonna be uh, in the past so from the last two hours based on the current time taken out from the system itself um, and if the receiving time is greater than the last two hours then uh, simply show uh, uh, like convert that into this MMDDYY format and do the comparison and only those top emails would be displayed so you can use these sort of functionalities in uh, IMAP as well but you don't have the f uh, filter 
option available within this activity. You can do that once you have retrieved the emails. So let's say um, you first take out first 500 unread emails, right? That's the maximum threshold. Then you'll have to do the filtering on those 500 emails and then you might get the required 20, 20, 50 emails or whatever, right? But instead, in Outlook, you can do the filtering right at the server level itself and retrieve only those emails which fit the criteria that you have put upon. That way it becomes really easy, faster, efficient and becomes, um, you know, like, like something that is easily usable for, uh, for the subsequent operations, right? So um, I also want to ponder a little bit more upon this um, receive time because in here, first we have started the double quotes and these all these functions, the now dot to add hours, because if you put it in the double quotes, they'll be t treated as um, usual text itself, right? So what you did was you also have to use a single quote. If you see it in here, so double quotes, then I use the single quote, then double quote again. So receive time is here. And uh, this is the function which is being used. The, the receive time is the automatic and built functionality to get the receiving time of the email. And then the now dot add two hours is the functionality within the UI path that we have used for the Outlook. And um, once you have provided the whole function, right, then you close the double quotes from the initial uh, time. And uh, also you have uh, the single code that you close down from, uh, you know, from here, from the functions standpoint. May have been a little confusing. So um, let me actually give you this whole formula just in a single go. Put the receive time, right? Started the single quote. You close the single quote in here itself, and uh, that that gives you the, you know, this is more like a, from the syntax standpoint. It's it, it takes a little bit of time and effort, but uh, to use the uh, these functions, you have to have them in the single quote. Is is the long story short, right? So you close your double quotes first in here. Then you start another double quote and uh, close it down it in here. And uh, between these double quotes, you had a single quote as well. Right? This is going to work, so don't worry about this. Red sign. Okay? So you got the Outlook mail messages, then you can retrieve them uh, using the for each loop, and uh, you should be all set. Correct? So that's how the uh, email messages are, um, you know, received within the workflow and uh, can be computed further. So we have discussed the IMAP and the Outlook mail messages. I am also going to share a link to check out these. Um, so we use two separate functions, if you see, right? One is uh, specific to the Outlook, and this is uh, for the mail strings and, uh, you know, uh, the VB.NET functions that we are using, right? So uh, I'm going to share a link to read more about these um, .NET functions as well as the Outlook specific functions in uh, the description and also in the blog post. So please do check that out. And, um, uh, you know, you should be able to use many, many different sort of operations to retrieve your mail messages. All right. Um, okay, this might be a little confusing, so please do try it out yourself. And uh, let me know if there are any concerns. I'll be more than happy to address them. And, um, you know, if you want to have a thorough learning, as I discuss always, check out the CRISPR Learning book series on Amazon, the video series, which is on Udemy and uh, on Skillshare. And uh, um, uh, we, I guess you should be all set. Do use these resources if you want to have a thorough learning. All right. Thank you very much and happy automating. Goodbye.